Yeah, so the, uh, the role of the, the vision itinerant, uh, so to speak, was to uh, basically teach me Braille. You know, being blind, I'm unable to read an actual print book, so I had to learn Braille. And uh, in all honesty, it, it was pretty difficult at first. You know, I didn't, I didn't understand why I had to read Braille. You know, people read to me, that seemed to go well. And, and plus, I didn't understand Braille at first. Uh, you know, the way I like to put it is think about when you first read a print book. I mean, it probably just looked like a bunch of crazy shapes that meant absolutely nothing. Well, that's a little like what Braille was to me, just a bunch of, I don't know, dots or something going across the page. And, and some of them were, you know, a little closer together than others. But really, what did they, what did they mean? But... Uh, the, the vision itinerant taught me how to read Braille and uh, made sure I got uh, all my work in Braille. It usually ahead of time, the teacher in class maybe, for example, if we were going to uh, read an article and, and discuss it, the vision itinerant would take that article and make a Braille copy so that I could read it along with, with my class. And, uh, you know, like I said, when I, when I started out learning Braille, I, I did not like it at all. But uh, one of the things uh, my dad's often talked about, uh, Miss Nettie, who was my, my first vision itinerant, one of the things that she did that I thought made Braille fun was she would always get make these little flashcards with simple words and phrases in Braille. And uh, when it came time for me to learn the colors, she had those little scratch and sniff stickers and I used to always enjoy them so like for example she would write on the flash card in braille the word red and then she'd put a sticker on it and I would scratch and sniff the sticker and it would smell like cherry so I could associate red with cherry and you know she did that with all the colors you know blue was blueberry purple grape etc etc and uh, after my challenges and difficulties with Braille, that helped make, make it fun for me as well. I want to touch on something else real quick, uh, talking about his education. Patrick, was the school he started in, in primary or first grade or kindergarten, whatever, was what we called in Louisville a Spanish immersion school. So the students learned all of the nouns and the numbers, uh, you know, basic uh, Spanish words. And Patrick took to it like, uh, you know, just really well. He loved learning Spanish. And so he just, he very quickly ex went way past all his peers and, and loved Spanish. By the time he got to middle school, and you know, like when you get to middle school, the kids are like, yeah, I don't wanna learn Spanish. They're in the classroom, but they're not really learning. You know, they're looking out the window and they're learning, you know, doing everything else. But Patrick was so good at Spanish, he struggled in math. Uh, Patrick struggled, it's so frustrating for me who math always came easy to, I'm like, you know, this, this kid can play Brahms on the piano, but he can't, he can't visualize how to put numbers in rows and do simple 10 plus 12 addition. I mean, it just blew me away. And hats off to his vision itinerant. Once we got dad out of the way with the math homework <laughs> and got his vision itinerant on board, Patrick began to get understood math or figured out a way to learn math. He actually took algebra and, I mean, you can give Patrick algebraic equations and he can, he can insert uh, integers and numbers and variables and figure all that stuff out. If you can give him a formula to memorize, he can do the work. But he couldn't line up these numbers to do simple math. It drove me crazy. But anyway, he, uh, so, so he, a lot of times during his Spanish class in middle school, they'd pull him out of Spanish because it was, they were trying to teach those students what Patrick had learned in third grade. So they pull him out of his Spanish class and do some little extra math tutoring, and he took math short courses at our uh, at the blind school in Louisville. But his teacher, I'll never, I'll never forget this. I'm talking about going above and beyond, she would stay after school and grade papers, and Patrick would stay after school with her in the classroom and do conversational Spanish. So she just did that of her own free will, so that he could keep progressing with his Spanish skills. And, uh, which I always, I'll never forget, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, I know you do. Who was that? Uh, Clara Miranda. From Cuba, right? Right. Yeah, great, great lady. Patrick always had great Spanish teachers from different countries, so he kind of learned different Spanish dialects. But uh, 
uh, again, it was sort of a give and take with his education. It's like, okay, he needs help in math. He's way ahead in Spanish. We'll pull him out of that class, and then she'll do conversational Spanish with him after school. So it worked out very well. Uh, now I want to lighten things up a little bit. Everybody kind of stretch their arms above their